year is 1950, the studio is Monogram Pictures, and the film is Hot Rod, the story of a boy, his car, and the forces in the world that seem to be conspiring against the pair of them, all in a short hour-long runtime. If you were to uh, take a look at the description of this film on, say, the Internet Movie Database, you would be treated to a pretty conventional and somewhat sensational description of the picture at hand. A young man builds a hot rod despite the disapproval of his father, a juvenile court judge. Circumstantial evidence points to the innocent teenager when his car is involved in a hit-and-run accident and he must reconcile with his father. Sounds downright sensationalist, doesn't it? Sounds like one of those old scare films like Reefer Madness or, more relevant to the conversation, 1947's The Devil on Wheels. Or could it be one of those golly gee, that's just so swell kind of teen film that American International was pumping out around the same time, oh, 1956, and onwards. Turns out the answer is neither, because the hit and run is, well, it's this. R-131. And that about sums up Hot Rod in a nutshell. Not as mad as it seems. While it can certainly be melodramatic at times, it doesn't strike me as a melodrama in the same way the aforementioned teen pictures and scare films would. What director Louis D. Collins and screenwriter Dan Ullman do is build a conversation around the topic of hot riding and the issue of where one can race. In lieu of saintly authority figures, we have veteran character actor Art Baker as Judge Langham, a somewhat tired local judge who finds himself pondering the possibility of pushing for a designated drag strip for his town, but is also set in his ways of giving out stern rulings to the teenagers that appear before him. Inasmuch as these defendants are first offenders, the court will not impose a jail sentence. And the court will do its utmost to see that they do not become second offenders. Their automobile operator's licenses are hereby revoked for the period of one year. Your Honor, I'm a widow. My son helps to support me. He makes deliveries for the market and that... You should have thought of that before you allowed him to rebuild the car's... In lieu of the misguided children, we have David Langham, played by the prolific Jimmy Lydon, who wants to have a rod of his own with the hopes of the coop impressing his high school sweetheart and upstaging the fastest guy in town, Jack Blodgett, played by former little rascal Tommy Bond. He clashes with his father throughout, but neither proof unreasonable or silly, because you can understand both of their convictions. Practically every good-sized city in the West has one of those straightaway strips nearby. Yeah, be a swell thing for this city, don't you think? Hey, keep those hot rods in off the street. Yeah, it would. Listen, if you two ham actors are leading up to what I think you are, the answer is no. Now, you know how I feel about this, and if you think for a moment... I'm not I'd asking like... for a hot rod, Dad. It's just that, well... I agree with you about racing in the streets. I think it's dangerous, too. But where else are the kids gonna race? Now, if they had a... That I can answer very simply. They are not going to race, and that's that. But, Dad, racing against the clock's been approved by every police department I know of. You ought to give it some thought. Yeah, and with you behind a movement like this, it couldn't miss. And I know just the spot for a strip. Well, boys, if I thought for a moment I could trust these hot rod drivers to race only on a strip, but that's out of the question. Now, my methods may be a little harsh, but at least they were. In spite of clearly pushing 30 at the time of making it, Leiden lends the role incredible charm, charisma, and a surprising relatability. And for a film whose advertising promised speed, crazy kids, and hopped-up cars. While they do deliver on that through a few well-placed races, Leiden and his chemistry with Baker brings it all down to earth and makes the film feel more a part of a conversation about the subject than an emotional berating or a hedonistic endorsement. And it fits within the hot-rodding landscape, as by 1952, shorts like Roadrunners would be pushing the good word of the National Hot Rod Association, and of making safe and legal drag strips, and pop cinema at large, like the 1956 AIP picture Hot Rod Girl, would also make a point of it. The more laid-back approach to the issue, combined with the fact that Hot Rod comes off as a slightly clunky, yet oddly wholesome coming-of-age film, makes it stand out from the rest. You can literally find this thing free on YouTube, so if you're interested in a somewhat corny yet still pretty neat slice of Hollywood Eyes 50s life, Hot Rod is more than worth a watch. And that about covers it. If you like what you saw, give the video a like across the web. Links in the description to the channel on YouTube, Dailymotion, Rumble, and BitChute. And if you want to keep up to date on channel news, follow me on Twitter at Candor Quality. As always, thanks for dropping by, and we'll catch you all on the flip side.